On home theater fanatics, we don't think a 5.1 system should cost more than a bobsled with three horses attached to the front of it that's towing a Ford truck. So we're going to talk about the Triangle Borea 5.1 surround sound system. You have to use that. You have to use that one. Today, Mike and I are going to take a look at the Triangle 5.1 surround sound system. See? That's how you do it. But we already said that in the intro. So now we're just being repetitive. Okay, okay, I got it. You got it? Yeah. Got, all right, all right, good. We're working through it. Hey guys, we're going to go ahead and dive right in. I'm Mike with, oh, I'm Mike with Home Theater Kinetics. Yeah, I'm Mike <laughs> and I'm Giles with Audio Architects. <laughs> okay. All right guys, you ready to dive right in? I'm Mike with Audio Architects. And I'm Giles with Home Theater Fanatics. And we're going to make sure you know everything you need to know about the Triangle 5 dot. Well, I guess it's a 5 dot 0 system. At yeah, this point. yeah, well, we're going to listen to it as a 5 dot 1 because in a home theater or a media room, you can't really have just a 5 dot. I mean, you could, but you wouldn't want to. So we're going to supplement a Triangle 5 dot system with the dot 1. Right? Well, well, I mean... If, Our, we're, if we're being honest, it's dot three. Well, we're going to actually do it with a lot of stuff. So we're going to try it out with the SVS sub, and then we're going to try it out with part of the typical complement of subwoofers that I use in my home theater, which is this is why a, I'm glad. <laughs> this is why I'm glad I'm here because I mean, if we're going to do a home theater video, we're going to do it at Home Theater Fanatics. So I'm excited to get into it. I'm excited to hear exactly because I've I've heard almost every speaker aside from the center channel. I've heard every speaker that Triangle has offered us. Yeah, and that's the um, that's the BR03s, the bookshelves, and then the BR09s and the BR08s, right. which are the towers. And the 9s got an extra 6.5 compared to the 8. Right. Yeah. And I have done a video on the Triangle BR03s that you could find right here. Uh, I'm, I'm excited because the Triangle BR03s and the 09s are phenomenal. Yeah. So I could only imagine and the, the eights are good too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I can only imagine put you know put together in perfect harmony. It's well, we're be... gonna we're gonna find out. Yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and find out. Check out these specs, guys. And when we come back, we'll let you know what the deal was. It's time for specs, and we're gonna get started with the BR08. So this is the tower, right? Okay, the first thing to point out with this unit is that it is front ported, and that's a pretty big deal for me because it eliminates a lot of issues with wall placement and that kind of stuff when you have a speaker that is rear ported. Continuing up from that port, you'll find four drivers installed. You've got two mid-base drivers, a mid-range, and a tweeter. These four drivers are configured in a three-way configuration with a total sensitivity of 92 decibels. The frequency range for these towers is 40 to 22 kilohertz and power handling is 150 watts RMS. Next up is the iconic BR-03. This speaker has been talked about by everyone and it's super, super popular. And there's a reason for that, and that's because it sounds really good. So just like the tower, this is front ported, and you've got those two cute little ports down at the bottom in front of the box. Uh, and moving up from there, you'll find a mid-range driver and the tweeter. So this is a two-way design. Sensitivity is 90 decibels. The frequency range is 46 hertz to 22 kilohertz, and power handling is 100 watts. Rounding out the trifecta of trifection from triangle, <laughs> you've got the BRC1, the center channel. Now, this is a horizontally laid out center channel. So you've got a mid-range driver, your tweeter, and then another mid-range driver as you go from left to right. This is front ported with two, again, cute ports right there in the front. Um, it is a two-way design, just like the bookshelf speaker. Sensitivity is 90 watts, bandwidth is 57 to 22 kilohertz, power handling is 90 watts. At the time of filming, if you hop over to the Adorama website, you can actually buy these five speakers as a kit. And for all five of them, so the two towers, the two surrounds or bookshelves, and the center channel, you're looking at a total price tag of $2,477. That is absolutely outstanding. Take that remaining 500 bucks to bump you up to about three grand put into a subwoofer and you have a stellar setup. 
I'd like to give a special shout out to Adorama. Thank you so much for helping me work this deal out with Triangle and sending these out for review. Um, if you check down below, I'll have all the links where people can go and check these out on the Adorama website. If you want to pick up a pair, that's the spot to do it. Now that you guys have seen the specs of these three speakers, the BR-08s, the BR-03s, and the, what the fuck is it called? Center channel. All right, folks, now that you've seen the specs on the speakers, and those are the BR-03s, the BR-08s, and the BRCO, fuck, what is it? BRCO1? Welcome back, everybody. Now that you've seen the specs, we're gonna go ahead and jump in to the build quality of these speakers themselves. Now, they're all very similar. Everything from the BR-03 to the 8 to the BRC-01, uh, they're identical as far as the quality goes. So we'll focus on this tower. And I think we can get started with the grill. Yeah, uh, they have a wonderful magnetic grill with beautiful build quality. Giles, you know I love magnetic grills. Um, it's, it's sturdy. The magnetic force is actually really impressive when you, you know, put the take the grill off and put it back on. I'm I'm really impressed with that. Yeah, eight magnets, grill cloth on the front, and then some type of very lightweight. I wouldn't call it MDF, but it's maybe like MDF, a particle board, something, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it looks like it's glued on. But the front of the grill and the back of the grill are both look really, really, really good. Mm. Yep. Now, and and I am actually a grill expert now. He he is. Yeah. He can he can identify a magnetic grill a mile away. <laughs> Go back and look at our old videos and you'll know what we're talking about. But from the grills, now let's talk about the box. Yeah, let's go ahead and show the, the public the just a little sneak peek of the color. I, li I love the walnut. The dark walnut yeah. is, this is actually one of my favorite colors, Giles, I think. Right on. Um, now this also comes in black and white as well, I believe. Yep, and then this is wood tone. This is a vinyl wrap of some kind, so... Uh, this is not veneer. Um, to get veneer, you got to pay a little bit more. And what's the cost? Seven forty nine per speaker at the moment. Um, I know I hate quoting prices because they it they always tend changes. to fluctuate so much. So, so fifteen hundred bucks a pair, which yeah. seems reasonable, um, especially when we talk about the uh, sound quality, which will be coming up in just a bit. Um, but yeah, as far as build quality, I mean, for the price point, uh, I'm I'm okay with vinyl wrap. You know, because sure. they, they needed to keep it. I think they needed to keep their costs a little lower. Um, it's not going to be like a heavy duty wood, so it is a, kind of a lightweight speaker, but it has just enough girth, I think. Enough heft. Yeah, to to really uh, is girth a bad word to use? Yeah, because and, and it also doesn't have anything to do with the weight. That's true. Girth is more. It's, no, it's it's the the it's the heft of something. Okay. Uh, so I think this one has enough heft to to make it into a solid, solid situation. What do you think? Yeah, so um, you know it's light enough that a single person can move it around without any issues, um, but it's heavy enough that I didn't notice any resonance coming out of the actual enclosure itself. Uh, now, just like with everything, heavier is always better, at least in my head, I equate like weight with quality. Um, and this is not super heavy, but like we said, We'll talk about the sound and it, it produces. I'm actually surprised we're not bodybuilders by now, lifting all this stuff we do. I, I know, I, I am getting pretty buff though. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and take a look at the front, Giles. Um, as the others, it has a white cone driver, all six and a half inch drivers here, with a black face plug, and the base drivers are also six and a half. I like the look of them, you know? I think they have a very cool, I love the dust cap on the, on the base drivers. And I love the face plug. So all in all, I think, that including the one-inch uh, silk dome tweeter, I think it has a really, really cool, edgy look to it, don't you think? Yeah, no, the, the look is great. And, you know, the white pops out. So, you know, like, uh, there are certain brands, when you see see them, you can identify them and say, that is a like, so-and-so speaker. Like BMW Yellow and stuff like right, that. Right, exactly. Same thing here, right? So uh, the, the white cone on the mid-range driver with the face plug is very identifiable. It stands out. And then the tweeter also has a nice design with this, uh, I think it's plastic guard that is vertically oriented on the front of the tweeter. Uh, but when you see this, everybody's going to say it's triangle. There, there's no question. And triangle, and this, this is the Boyer range, as you move up in the triangle hierarchy of equipment, the look becomes even more and more distinctive. So this is really just a taste of what you get as you move into the higher lines. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So since we're at Home Theater Fanatics headquarters, which is a place I love to be, 
uh, we are using Giles' signal chain. So Giles, what are we using to power and source these bad boys? Yeah, so this is pretty much my standard testing environment. So at the at the top end, when you start out with your source, uh, we leverage Kaleidoscape, and we watched a number of different uh, movies and videos on Kaleidoscape. So that included uh, uh, Hans Zimmer live at Prague. We watched uh, some John Wick. We watched some Marvel movie stuff. So um, it, it, for those that aren't familiar with Kaleidoscape, it's basically a digital media server that allows you to have all the quality that you get on physical disk without having to have the media. Um, you don't have the media, which is kind of like streaming, but you don't have the quality issues that you get with streaming. So it's kind of the best of all worlds, but it costs a lot. <laughs> uh, but it's absolutely my favorite source. So we go from Kaleidoscape down to my pre-pro, and that's a Acurus Act 4. Um, absolutely superb piece of equipment from there. Uh, power amplification is uh, dealt with with a Stark Sound A7. Um, on the subwoofer side of the house, we're using a mini DSP 2x4 HD for some tuning, and that feeds a Symbison um, FP10,000Q multi-channel uh, amplifier. Um, and then the power obviously goes from there out to the five speakers uh, that we're using from Triangle, the BR3s, the BR08s, and the BRC01s. On the subwoofer side of the house, we've got a Velodyne Digital Drive Plus 18 and two GSG Marty Cubes uh, using the Dayton Audio Ultimax 18. Did, did you guys get all that? So just, just a little bit of information there. Um, cable. Cables are bulk in-wall rated cables from Monoprice. Yes, and I think I don't I don't think anybody can argue with you there because Monoprice uh, is kind of the standard for in-wall. So yeah. I think that's uh, and I love the way you have everything hooked up as far as the the plates and everything. Mm -hmm. You've made it so user friendly. I remember when we first started, you know, filming here. Uh, and now it's just like, you're plug and play over here, buddy. Yeah, the, the idea for, with the theater is that it's not just a theater to enjoy movies in. I mean, that is part of it. But mm -hmm. also, this is Review Central, so equipment comes in and out quite a bit. Um, now, I do want to come up with a better solution at some point around the cabinet itself and being able to add in equipment that way. Um, but as far as speakers go, yeah, it's pretty easy these days to, to move things out, especially the center channel. Um, because as you guys notice, this is a external center, center channel that you'd need to set on a piece of furniture or put inside your credenza or whatnot. Um, typically in the theater, I use a in-wall uh, speaker behind the screen, behind an AT screen. Had to come up with a ingenious method of being able to swap speakers in and out easily for center channel use and I'll drop a picture so you can see how I deal with that. Cool. Yeah. Okay, now that you know the signal chain, you know the build quality and the specs, we're getting down to the brass tacks and that's how did they actually sound. So Mike, get us going. Well, uh, like I, as I said before in the video, I have reviewed the BR-03s in the past, the Bro 3s in the, the past. The Bro 3s, no, the BR-03s. In, the, <laughs> in the past and um, I've always been very impressed with uh, triangles, such a balanced sound. You know, it, it, it really, to me, it doesn't, and, and I know you and I had a, a, you know, kind of a different opinion, but to me, the, the highs are perfect, the mids are perfect, the lows are perfect. Like, it's just for the price and for the value, I think the sound quality is absolutely phenomenal. And what what caught me is that there was such harmony when we when we actually started playing uh, the jo the John Wick was actually what caught me at first the gunshots the just the I knew we we weren't using Atmos which is something we're usually used to in this environment but it still felt very immersive and it felt really really just fun it's like a fun I know that's a weird kind of an adjective to use for a speaker. I know, you're supposed to say they're transparent or yeah. they're blue with a little bit of edge when yeah. they get crunchy or, yeah. <laughs> it's true, I know. I, you know what, I should carry around my little audiophile dictionary that That's right. I need to make one, but um, honestly, I thought they had great bass, they had nice mids, and they had really nice, okay, I will, I will concede to you and say they are a little on the bright side, However, not enough to be piercing or fatiguing or anything like that. So I like them. I like the sound. What do you think? So I, I think that the, the sound of the speakers really um, uh, blends themselves to, to different use cases. So if you go back to the bookshelf battle, which is out now, you can find that on Mike's channel or on my channel, um, you'll, you'll see that I talked about the BR-03 
three, and I said that it could be a little edgy on top. Um, and that's in two channel listening world, right? Now, when you translate that into a 5.1 surround sound system in a home theater, I didn't, I didn't get that at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I wasn't getting. It, they're they're bright. They're pl plenty yeah. bright. Yeah, they're, um, like I said, they're not fatiguing. They're no. just they're just nice, bright, fun speakers. You know, but they they didn't kind of go over the top for me uh, as much as I was feeling just in in two channel world when I was really really focused on on the speakers. So in the five dot world where I'm watching this movie, uh, maybe I, I have a different way of thinking about it, or maybe I'm listening in a different way. I'm not really sure, but I, that didn't come across to me at all. So they were very smooth. Um, I was able to get a really good front sound stage as items panned across. Uh, the BR-03s on surround sound duty did really, really well. Mm -hmm. And especially when we watch Hans Zimmer um, mm -hmm. with the crowd effects, I mean, it really filled the room up. Uh, so for me, um, you know, are they the best speaker I've ever heard for a home theater application? No. Um, for the price point to get into this 5.x uh, system, do I think it's worth that money? Yeah, I think this sound is well worth the dollars that you put into these speakers. And, you know, for me, you, you have to get to a certain point in a home theater where it's good enough. And before that, you're just like, oh, man, this just, oh, it's not good. These go well beyond that level of being good enough, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you think? Um, well... I've tried these in two channel. I've tried the towers in two channel mode. Actually, I have the BR 9s which, which are, are way better for two channel. Which I uh, which I will be doing a video on as well. Uh, but you know, for five channel listening, I thought these did really well. Yeah, I, I can agree with you. They they imaged really well. The you know the just the immersion was actually quite impressive. I really liked the fact that the BR 3s they they were just like on over duty, you know, like they really did a really good They were good providing job. a lot of fill. Yeah. And, and and like you said, normally you're used to, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven speed, you know. Yeah, 11 channels. The fact that, you know, I'm used to hearing that and I was actually really uh, comfortable and pleased with what I heard with these says a lot. Yeah, so, you know, when you compare to what I really consider the, the stark reference system that I have in here, the, the triangles at a fraction of the cost mm -hmm. really kept up. Sound quality, dynamics, uh, tonal quality, balance, it, it was all really good. Um, and when you consider the dollars, again, very, very good. Yeah, the colors were so bright. The colors, yes, they, you could feel the colors in your brain with these speakers <laughs> or you something. Could, you, could, you could see the sound. <laughs> and and hear and hear, hear yeah, the, and hear the lights. <laughs> you, you could see the sound, hear the lights, and then the tactile response gives you an emotional impact that oh, is priceless. Man. We got to totally leave that in. Yeah, All right, we so. <laughs> All right, guys, time for the final word. So, Giles, what were your final thoughts, and what was what did Triangle leave you with? Um, so here, here's my my, I guess holistic impact, uh, my point of view. So. For me, if you are looking to buy a set of speakers in the sub $3,000 range, somewhere around there, to get a complete five dot surround system for a home theater, this is absolutely a set of speakers that you need to find and listen to. I mean, they're, they're, they're that good. They are really great um, in that niche. Uh, can you get better? Yeah. Can you get worse? Oh yeah. Uh, but for me, I would be absolutely happy listening to these anywhere. I mean, they, they cross all the hurdles that I have uh, to create a competent sound listening environment for a five dot home theater or media room. And, you know, honestly, I think these probably would shine even more in a media room environment because, you know, they look good. Um, you know, obviously they're, they're towers and they're, they're bookshelf speakers, so you can't put them in wall. And, you know, when you get into higher end theater stuff, you're usually going behind screen and that kind of stuff. Uh, but these, you can put these anywhere. So if you put these in your living room, I think it's going to be an even better value for you in that type of environment than, than a theater. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what's your final word? What do you think? I think for under three thousand dollars, you can get yourself a good subwoofer, this whole five dot system, and you're good. You know, you're good. This is a great entry point into hi-fi, into home theater, into the whole environment of of, of high, higher end audio than what you would find out of a you know home theater in a box system or something that you oh yeah know, I mean, this sound absolutely destroys sound bars yeah. absolutely destroys so, uh, HT in a box absolutely yeah. so I mean 
speakers alone, we're looking at around a little under 2,500 for everything. Uh, I think with a subwoofer, five, 600 bucks for a subwoofer, you're looking at about three grand, I think all in. Yeah. And I think for three grand all in, you got everything you need for a 5.1 system, aside from an AVR, but I, I think this is a win. I think this is a huge win. Like I said, this is a perfect speaker for someone that's starting out that wants a very balanced sound because a lot of speakers, companies out there, they have their sound signature. Yeah. You know, they have a p particular or peculiar or, or, you know, little nuances and stuff. This is a very balanced, well put together sound that Triangle has provided us. So I think it's a win, guys. I loved it. Uh, I, I know Giles always has a great time with these Triangle speakers. So. Um, thanks for joining us. Uh, I hope you guys like these new collabs that we're doing. Cause I think honestly, we're having a lot of fun with it. And yeah. I think this is something we might continue doing. So let us know in the comments, if you like our little collabs and you want to see more and let us know what you want to see, let us know what you want us to review. And then we'll, we'll, we'll sign petitions and tell these companies to send us stuff, bro. I'm having yeah. a lot of fun with you, man. And I, I think that resonates with the crowd as well. So um, please guys check out our, uh, you know, Facebook groups. We will have all the stuff in the description below. Patreon, super important guys. Uh, Patreon is a way to show us that you support, not only support the channel, but want to see more stuff. So a lot of this stuff we purchase ourselves or have to, you know, go out there and find. It's just a way to support the channels and to keep them growing and to keep them going. So let, let you know, please check it out. All this stuff in the description below. Giles. Yeah. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, comments, all those things. Thank you so much for your time. Um, and as I always say, see you guys in the next video. Be well.